are painting a chickadee in acrylics. I'm going to be doing a reddish orange background. I'm working on a Frederick's watercolor canvas board. This is an eight by 10. And thank you to Frederick's for providing me with this canvas for this video. The reason that I go with a watercolor canvas board versus a regular canvas or a canvas board, I just like how smooth these are. Super, super smooth. Never even use them for watercolor. I love them for acrylic. So if you're trying to get smooth blending, if you're trying to get really fine detail, these are absolutely wonderful to work on. I'm going to put the color down initially with a Teflon bristled filbert. So this one is a Simply Simmons number 12. So about that size. So larger would go faster, but this is what's convenient. I thin my acrylic paints with a lot of water, a lot more water than you might think. So I'm just going to start with some red oxide. I'm going to do a base layer. I'm not going to worry about any shading, anything fancy. I just want to cover up the white of the canvas so that I'm not fighting that. That way, when I go on with the other layers where I start getting that nice blending, I want to get some purpley blues in there. When I start doing that, it's gonna blend out and look a lot smoother and I'm less likely to have streaks because I've already gotten rid of the white of the canvas. And I'm going with a color that's the main color for my base. Let's go ahead and I can actually add a little bit of magenta into that now. And I'll just slop that in there. I don't really worry too much about my brush strokes because I'm gonna use a mop brush to get rid of those. Well, by mop brush, I actually mean a blush applicator. And if you're thinking, wow, a lot of water, I heard you're not supposed to mix water with acrylics or not very much water. Yeah, that's a myth that's been, go it's been going on for a long time, but there's actually a woman who has um, been spreading that. There's a video that's very popular on YouTube. I know I've mentioned it multiple times, but this is probably where if you're asking yourself, I heard you're not supposed to, it's probably because of that video. It's not true. You can mix water. Goldens themselves have done tests that prove like it was no problem. You mix all, I don't want to say all the water. I mean, you, you mix up to like 90 to 95% before it's an issue. So using water in your acrylics is a normal thing to do. We've all like, that's how they're done. You can use mixing mediums. I don't like them because they tend to make the paint dry faster. It's gunky. Like the texture is just weird. I'm just not a fan. And I'm just going to take, this as a blush brush. The supplies that I'm using are all linked in the video description if I did my job right. If not, you can find them at lockery.com under acrylic supplies. I'm just going to soften that out. You can get the reference photo if you want to paint along with me. That is over at my website, lockery.com. Link to the exact reference photo in the video description. Before I dry this, I need to clean my mop brush. So whenever you're using these brushes, it's again, a powder brush. I like these because they don't, the makeup brushes, because they don't shed like an actual mop brush. You wanna make sure they're clean and dry and ready to go. So when I rinse this, there should only ever be paint on the tips of the bristles. So I only have to dip the bristles, just the tips in the water. I don't have to soak the whole thing. That way I can get it dry and ready to go before my next layer. So I'm gonna use the hairdryer and dry this. You wanna make sure that this is completely, completely dry before you go on to your next layer. Otherwise, the previous layers will lift off. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling more of these magentas and plums, because I don't want it that much of the red oxide. Like, I want the red oxide color in there, but let's, let's make it prettier, even more. So I've got a lot of this magenta in here. Let's even pull some plum. Oh, that's starting to dry. I may have to reload that. There we go. Just get this wet and I'll move this. This board has worked really bad, so it's making things worse. Let's see if that helps. Oh yeah, that's better. I just needed to bend it the other direction, sort of. Now I can sp use my fine mist sprayer. If you are painting in acrylics and you do not have one of these, you need to get one of these. They're fairly inexpensive. They're like under 10, like they're not much. It's not expensive, but um, I'm just going to mist that to keep it wet. So I, I want all of this to stay wet the entire time I'm blending this so that I can get that nice wet into wet look. So if it starts to dry, if it starts to kind of tack up, all I need to do is do a light mist with that. Now you want to use a fine mist spray or not a regular spray bottle, or you can use your airbrush and mist the water. That works too. It actually works technically better. It just takes more work. But um, you can use a or you don't wanna use your regular spray bottle like for house plants or cleaning or whatever, the water droplets would be too big and that creates a whole lot of, of drama. Where like the water droplet that comes off that's too big, it makes it, when you go to blend with your mop brush, that drop pull, all the paint that was on that drop pulls off. So 
That is, I need some more deep plum. Hold on one second. I don't have enough of the dark color here. It's actually not called deep plum. Prism violet, you will work. Oh, here, not the same color, but whatever. Close enough. I just want a mixture of a few colors in there. This is looking more black on, at least on my screen, it's really more purple in person. Bunch of magenta up here. And I'm gonna pull a little bit of cobalt blue with a touch of white. I'm gonna let it mix with what's already on the brush. And this is gonna give me this almost silvery color as it mixes in. Oh, I'm loving that color. That actually, that worked out better than I expected. I mean, I knew the colors, the, it was the colors to use, but I'll have to adjust the color again. It looks like it's a little desaturated for you guys, but that is working really well. Okay. Now I am going to go ahead and mist this lightly where it's starting to dry down here. Just a little, don't overdo it or it doesn't blend well. And now I'm gonna go back over this. And we'll soften that out. It's a little bit too wet here. This area is creating streaks. So if you create too, if you get it too wet, you will actually add streaks when you go to blend it. It's a little bit too much water in my case there. So I'll use a separate brush as this sets. I'll just get a light blending. If you can see, I don't know if you can see, yeah, there you can kind of see better. There's a few streaks in here. It looks smoother on the camera than it does in person. So I will go over that with another mop brush and soften that out. You know, when, we, when I say I'm gonna blend something out, I'm not really blending, I'm getting rid of my brush strokes. Like it should already be blended. The color is located where I want it to be. Okay, I'm gonna switch to a brush that is clean. Prop this up on the edge of my easel there. And I just barely want the tip of the bristles touching the canvas. If I touch too hard, it starts picking up paint and I'm back to creating brush strokes instead of getting rid of them. The whole goal here is to get rid of those brush strokes or at least soften them out. That actually came out really pretty. Um, I'll adjust the colors in just a moment. So the first thing I'm gonna do, same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these brushes. Not that I'm gonna need them again tonight, but I still want them clean. So I don't have to spend as much time drying them. And I just rub this on in a circle on a paper towel to dry that off. And again, with this one, just dipping the tip of the bristles in the water. Common, not true thing that is spread by one specific, person or um, on YouTube is the idea that your acrylic paint water needs to be clean. You should have a separate one for your brushes and a separate one for your, um, one for cleaning the brushes, one for loading the paint and thinning the paint. That's for watercolor. That video, the specific one, the guy who made it, he just made a bunch of crap up so that he had something different to say than what everyone else says, but it's all crap. Like that is not true. Your acrylic paint can be I mean, this isn't even that dirty yet, but it can be mud. I mean, that is like as dark as my canvas and it does not affect anything negatively. Even when I go to paint the white part portions of the chickadee, that the white will overpower that. That's a watercolor thing, needing the clean water for your brushes and a separate one for mixing the paint. That is not an acrylic painting thing. Okay, so we're gonna dry this now. Since this is dry enough, we're gonna move this board out of the way. What I'm going to do, I've pre-drawn out my chickadee on a piece of transfer paper. Now, I don't recommend drawing your work directly onto the canvas. I don't recommend doing it first. I know some people will take like a charcoal or a graphite pencil, draw it out and then paint around it. Can you imagine trying to get this wet into wet blending around a chickadee or around your subject? It's not gonna look good. It's not, unless you're going for like looser brush strokes, then that can certainly work. But if you want this sort of smooth, smooth blending, you don't wanna be painting around the subject. So that's why I've got him drawn out on a separate piece of paper. All I have to do is tape this and hope that the painting is dry enough. It's questionable. And now I can take a piece of transfer paper and a stylus. 
And let me see if this is the right, this one might be exhausted. No, it's working. And I'm just going to trace over everything. Now, notice that his tail goes off the canvas. So you've got two choices, either have it within an inch of the edge of the canvas or just make it go right off the canvas. Either way is fine, but you don't want it just barely touching the edge of the canvas. Pick one. So I'm just going to loosely go over this. And you wanna make sure that it's taped in the upper two corners. You don't wanna just put one tape in the middle or the whole thing is just sliding all over and your drawing is not going to be lined up the way you wanted it to be. I like this angle of this chickadee because it's so different than you, how you usually see them. And it just looks so cute, like he's just getting ready for takeoff. Like he's gonna dive bomb his buddy. I don't need the details perfect. I just want to know about where things are supposed to go. Oh, I should put a, give him an eye, huh? I guess that would be helpful. And then all of these feathers need to be put in. So it takes a little extra time because yeah, I had to draw out the initial one and then I have to draw it back out, but there's no eraser mark. So your other option is to get your background done in. And then if you wanted to prehand, you can use a white charcoal pencil. I don't think I have, oh yeah, here we go. The General's white charcoal pencil. These guys are wonderful for drawing on top of acrylics. As long as the acrylics you're using, I should throw this out there. If you're using a high gloss acrylic like Golden's or Grumbacher, um, who else makes some Liquitex soft body, Liquitex heavy body, both those end up with a real gloss finish. Then that charcoal pencil doesn't stick very well. I also don't like those paints, not the Liquitex soft body or heavy body, I have them all, but I still go with the, char the um, Liquitex basics because they dry so much slower. It is so annoying how fast some of these other paints dry. So the Liquitex basics are just perfect for me or what I'm looking for in acrylic paints. And if you like that high gloss look, which I too also like, put a high gloss varnish over it when it's done. Those colors will come back to completely vibrant, just like they were when they were wet. They'll be beautiful. And there we go. That's probably enough. Oh wait, did I give the branch? Yeah, I've got the branch in there. And I don't choose Liquitex Basics because they're cheap. That's just an added bonus. I choose them because they just work amazing. Really good for my techniques. Okay, let's start by blocking in his eye. So we've got the pupil. I'm not gonna worry about where the shine mark is. I'm gonna come back and do that after. We've got the pupil. And I'm gonna need brown right around that. So to get brown, the way that I'm going to do that, I can use the same colors I'm already using. I'm just going to mix some red oxide and black, and that's gonna give me a nice brown. I used to buy the brown paint, but the problem that I was having is it dries super, like it in the container, in the bottle, it starts to get gunky, like chunks, um, gooey. It just doesn't stay good for as long as the other colors, so I just mix it now with red oxide. Burnt Sienna and Black will do the same thing for you. I've got a little detail around the eye here. Now, as much as I love the Liquitex Basics, I'm actually considering, I may start using, taking advantage of my Golden's acrylics a little bit more, because, just for the detailed stuff, because it's already thinned out, so I don't have to add as much water. Just for like a time-saving method or thing. Now the whole upper section is gonna have a shine, so it looks super weird right now. It'll come, that, that'll work out in a moment. The bottom part of his beak is a little bit darker. Well, what I have is a rake brush. And this is, imagine, this is your tack one bristle brush, or your filbert, sorry, where your bristles are just smooth. That is a rake brush. It's the same thing, 
but the bristles are cut, they're kind of spread out. You can, I've seen people try to make their own, not the same. You're not gonna get the same results. You can get interesting results, just not necessarily the same. So I'm going to start by, if I use more paint, more water, and more pressure, then he's going to come out, it just works like your regular filbert. But if I use a lighter hand, a little bit more water, that gives me a whole lot of little lines in one stroke. So think instead of a filbert, I'm getting like a bunch of little liner brushes. And I want some of my background color to show through, to peek through here. He's gonna have a lot of highlights with blues and such, but I'm just gonna paint this in with the black first. And I'll come back through with white highlights and then I'll glaze the blue over that. And I'll use the same blue, it was a cobalt blue that I used for my base, I'll use, in my background, I'll use the same blue and it'll help give that same tone. As much as possible, you really wanna use the same colors, like use a more limited color palette. Your work, you're gonna have more harmony in your colors. Things are gonna to work together better. If you've got a large set with a ton of colors, just pick a few out of there. Don't try using them all. It usually doesn't come out looking as good. See how you can really see all of these individual little lines here. I'm gonna get a base with just a little bit of the detailing in here. A bit more solid there, a bit more solid back here. Okay, and then we've got a grayish tone. So I'm just going to pull, I'll let a little bit of the red oxide come in. Just get close so you can see that. So the same black, added a bit more white and let the red oxide that was already on the palette, I'm pulling that into it. We'll use this for the feathers here. Same thing, doing that with the, I need a little bit more water. So one of the things that'll make a rake brush not really work properly to where you're not getting a whole lot of little lines is if the paint is too thick, if you don't thin it down with enough water. You want that thinned out a bit more. I'll let that pull up into the black a bit. And I'll work my way back and forth a couple of times. I'll pull some darks and lights back in there. This color also works for the part of the branch. So while I've got it out, I'm gonna switch over. Any filbert should work fine. You work. And I'll add shading and such on top of it, but just to get a base on that branch. We'll do the same thing, we'll use that for his foot. And I want this branch to fade out. I don't want it super bright, so I'm not pushing very hard. Just letting it fade as it moves away from the bird. And then I can use the same color as my base on his beak. I'll still have to come back through and do highlights, but that works. I'm gonna use this and create a face here, and then I'll put white over it. But I want this to show through the white, so I've got that grayish tone. And then we've got the tail. I can go ahead and use that color, same color. Oh, the glare is making it so I really can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Now I can do what is essentially dry brushing. There's not a lot of paint on this brush but it's because this canvas is so smooth. If you are working with a canvas that is more rough and you dry brush, there's not a lot of paint, not a lot of water in your brush, it'll catch the, the top parts of the canvas, the tooth of it, it's bumpier. And it catches that and it looks like crap. I know there are a lot of artists who teach you it's this great, fabulous way to paint. Unless you're working on a super, super smooth canvas, dry brushing looks terrible. There are very few cases where it doesn't. I know, people are gonna argue with me, whatever. I'm telling you, it doesn't look good. You might think it does because somebody else who's a beginner told you it looks good, it doesn't. With acrylic paints, that's one of the things that makes acrylics look very different than oils and not in a good way. I've heard people say, well, why don't you just paint with oils if you want it to look like oils? That's stupid. Why don't I just paint with the medium I like and make it look good? So um, that is why I'm able to dry brush though and I don't get that rough, bumpy textured look. Uh, it stays very smooth because this canvas is so smooth. 
and I'm just lightly, this has a little bit of water on it, so it's fairly translucent. I'm just gonna go over these wings here, get that grayish tone. Okay, I think that works. I'm gonna go ahead and darken this now and start pulling more of the brownish tone into some of these darker wing or feathers, the darker flight feathers. I can't talk. Okay. Now while this is wet, I can go ahead and add some detailing on the branch while we wait for the bird to dry a little. Actually, I'm gonna dry this and then do the branch while the bird cools off. So now I'm going to take, I'll use, this one will work. I'm just gonna take a small brush and start putting highlights and shadows. And this has that same blue, a little bit of that cobalt blue in there. Just getting some little chunky guys. Getting a bit of texture there. I don't wanna to get too much crazy detail because I really want the focus to stay around the bird. The original reference photo had like lots of branches in the background. I didn't want all of that because I really just wanted to focus on this little guy. So I don't wanna undo that decision by putting too much detail in this branch. You can also, while I'm at it, use that for the highlight on his leg. We'll add detail later, it looks a little weird right now. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that. I'm gonna come back through with some black. Now, one of the things you can't often see me do when I load that brush, I dab it on a paper towel that's on my easel before, ooh, need to dab that a little more, before I hit the canvas. Otherwise, you will have big globs in locations. You probably don't want them. You see, as I move out, I'm just gonna fade out just less and less. So as I move this way, it's just kind of fading out into that background. a little bit of the shading on the beak there. Just look at your reference photo and copy what you see. But you've got to teach yourself to copy what's there because oftentimes our brain is like, oh, I know what a feather looks like. I don't even need to look at that photo. Look at the photo and if your brain is trying to take over from what your eyes are seeing, flip your work and your reference photo upside down, you will notice so much more and you'll see things more accurately because it, it just makes your brain like kind of skip a beat on, wait, what, what am I looking at? And you just copy the shapes you see. That's what you want to do. Copy the shapes and shadows that you're seeing in your reference photo. Not your brain saying it's a feather. We know what a feather looks like. Don't even need that photo. Okay, now I'm going to come through and start creating, a, I'll probably use a smaller I've got a million different rake brushes over here. Where's the little one? I had a really tiny one. Just what everyone wants to do. Watch me look for brushes. Um, it'll work, I think, maybe. I'm gonna use you, and I'm gonna use that same bluish. So it's blue, white, there's a little bit of red oxide. It's pretty much all the colors on my palette are in this pile of blue right here. I'm gonna use this for some of these highlights. Hopefully that's not too much, probably too much. Worst case, I go back over it with black. Yeah, it's a bit on the too much side. And I need more water. That is way too thick is, the, I think, the bigger problem there. There we go. And so we've got this cute little highlight on his head. You want to be careful when you do highlights. Avoid straight gray if you can because it ages the subject. Like if you're drawing, let's say, a black lab and you put a bunch of gray fur for the highlights, or you're just using gray, you will make him look super old um, just because it's gray. Instead, use purples and blues. Get those other colors in there. Purples and blues are usually my go-to for highlights on black. If you struggle with fur, if you look up, there's a video that I did, um, just look up La Cree and I think it was a black panther in, I think I did it as a black leopard in um, colored pencil. And I'll show you how I do the, the colors with the blues and the purples there. And you can apply that same thing with the colors no matter what medium you're working in. I'm starting to build up to where he'll look nice and shiny on his head. It's brighter 
for what I'm seeing. Let's see if I can get that to where you can kind of see it a little bit better. It's definitely over the contrast is a little bit too sharp, unfortunately. I apologize for that. I'll hold it up in the other camera so you can see better. And I'll have a photo on my website when this is done. You can look at that if you want to get a better idea of the colors that I'm doing, since the video is not always super accurate, if you want to download that and copy it. And this photo came from, I believe, Pixabay? It's Pixabay or Unsplash, so it's royalty free. You have complete rights to use it in your own work, even to sell or make prints. There's these little highlights here. I'm gonna use this same color. I'm gonna use the same brush. I just pushed a little harder so it's not working like a rake brush now. Speak. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to white. I'm gonna use that same brush. It was working really well. I think actually the Golden's airbrush paint, if I was using that instead for the, the oh, I'm loading it and you can't even see, but for the rake brush, see how much water I have to add? I think if I just used the Golden's, my life would be easier. That thought struck me early, although I think it's probably more expensive to use the Golden's. That is certainly a possibility. Um, because it's you don't get as much of it, whereas I'm just thinning the other the Liquitex Basics down with water. But it, the nice thing is there are a lot of different ways we can go to get to that same end. So whether you want to use your airbrush paint or you want to use Liquitex Basics like I've been doing and just thin them out with water. So little teeny br um, brush strokes here. It's a whole bunch of little little guys. Very, very short. Don't do long brush strokes there. It makes the feathers look weirdly long. And the feathers are going to clump and cluster together. That's the other thing to really watch. It's not just a solid mass or just individual like confetti lines. We want to make these start to create little clumps. You can see like a little section here, a little section here. You can zoom that out in a little bit more for you guys. There you go. And I can keep building and adding more white as I need to. It doesn't need to be the absolute brightest I can go the first time through. But I also want to make sure, I want to put a little bit of extra time into the feathers, anything around the face and the eyes and beak, because that's really your focus. As I move away from the face, I'll do less and less detail. A little bit more solid as we get towards the center here. I've got too much water on my brush now. I'm going to reload that. There we go. If you get too much water, it'll be a bit too translucent and too runny. And see how just letting that background color show through? It really helps him to feel like he's a part of that scene. And this is especially important if you changed your background. So let's say this started as a blue background, I would want to do, or if it was a blue background and I changed it to red, that's why I would want red pulled in or these magentas and orange colors pulled into the subject. If he was blue, it would be the same thing. I would let the blue show through and whatever your background is, let some of that show through on your subject. Got a little bit of the detailing with the white comes up here, it fades out. And then we've got a little bit of frilling down here. Oh, he's already going to be adorable, I can tell. Little, actually, I'm not going to be lazy. I'm going to switch to the liner brush for that the white brightest highlights on that beak. Whoops! After I drop my brush, I get just a little bit of a highlight here. And I can take a clean brush if I need to soften that a little bit. And then I'm going to mix the same blue color that I had used before, the blue mixed with white, mixed with a little bit of everything. I'm gonna pull some of that for the highlight over his eye now. So this is kind of a grayish blue. You see how it rounds? I'm just gonna Pull that down a bit, add a little bit more.
And that makes such a difference in that eye when you get that gloss on there. And then I'm going to put a tiny bright, like a little bit of a white highlight right here. So thick white paint, not mixed with anything. Just a bit. And then he's got a gray area that goes around his eye. It's a dark gray. I'm gonna start with just a gray ring. And then I'm gonna take a little bit of white and add it to that gray so it's a couple shades lighter. And I'm gonna dot right around. Oops, too white. Dab that, got a little crazy. Gonna dot right over that ring around the eye. So we've got that little bit of detail. I know it's hard to see when it's this tiny, but it's there. Whoever ends up buying this, if this one sells tonight, you'll appreciate the little bit of work I'm doing that you can't really see. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna use while I've got my liner brush out. I'm just gonna take some of that black, get a little bit more detailing in here, some little feathers. Watch the direction. Look how they switch directions where they're going that way and they start curving back this way. Got some little feathers that stick out here, little wispy guys. Oh, he is cute. Let's move now onto these guys, these feathers. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm going to be using the rake brush, but I'm gonna use white this time and let the gray show through. Watch the direction. So here we start switching directions. This one, they, the lines really still are kind of clumped. They're just, there's a lot of overlapping. Tiny little guys. Load that again. So right now, because I want this, so it's kind of hard to see but because I want these lines so thin, having my paint thin down even more is why I'm able to get such thin, thin lines. So it looks like I'm doing just hundreds of little lines with a liner brush, except I'm doing it a lot faster because I'm getting multiples in one brush stroke. We go. Now let's get those flight feathers in. I think I'm going to start with the white and I can actually use this same brush as almost a liner, just holding it to its, the side. Eh, I'll switch to a liner. Being lazy is not making my life easier. May as well switch. A liner or a smaller round brush would work well. There we go. And then we start having a lot of these little white lines through here. This is super bright. I'll probably come back through and tone some of this down a little bit because the whites in this whole photo are very overexposed. I'll probably tone a little bit down with the blue, but I also really like the contrast, so I'm not gonna overdo that. Use more water on that brush. And a lot of these will get really close together to where they're basically touching. And I want to try to do these on the longer flight feathers in one brush stroke as much as possible. If I do a whole bunch of little strokes like that, they're going to look too fluffy. Fluffy's great around the bottom half of him, but on these feathers, I want to try to do most of this in one long brush stroke. So it's going to give me a much thinner, more controlled line. We've got some littler feathers in here. Let's 
see, we've got this defined one. And then a bunch of little, little guys here. They're kind of subtle, you don't really see them that well defined. Okay, and then we've got to come back through these feathers that are off to the side here. Where they're just overlapping a bit. I'm just constantly looking at that reference photo. I don't need every feather to be exact. I just need them to be close and about the right lo location. That is enough for this. We've got a smaller feather here. Okay, and I'll shade those individually. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to the rake brush. We'll start getting some of his body in here. So I'm gonna load that brush again. Oh, not really the right brush. No, I don't want you. I want the smaller one was working really well for me. Which one is this? This is a King Art. It's called a King Art one quarter Filbert grass comb. We're gonna give him his little fluffy body. So now we get that fluff. And while well, I've got the white paint, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing for what I was just talking about where I'm gonna fill, come back over this now that this is starting to dry. Pull those whites out a bit more. Some little dots around the eye there. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of the white for the brightest portions of the highlight on his head. Pull some of those out a bit more. And I'm not creating new ones. I'm going with the shapes that are already there. I'm just defining them a little bit better. I'm hitting the tips of a lot of, of the already existing highlights. A little bit more of the highlights on that branch while I've got this out. Again, letting that fade out as I move back. Few little guys in here, same thing. I'm gonna pull a little bit more with the highlights over this grade area. And now I need to do some shading on that tail. So which brush do I wanna apply the paint with? Do I have a small round? Yes, there it is. I'm gonna actually do some shading with black first because I need to pull some darker areas anyway in between some of these feathers. I'm just going in between what's already there. Just darkening a few of these up. Got a dark line here. I'm not gonna go too crazy detailed on the tail because that's another area I really want that to fade out. Take a clean, slightly damp brush, smudge that out. And on the reference photo, this part portion's a bit out of focus too. But I really, I, I don't want your, like he needs a tail obviously, but I don't want that being the thing that makes your eyes just shoot off the canvas. I'm gonna let that just be soft and in the distance more. It actually looks harsher in the video than it does in person. I'm gonna 
give you some of the highlights. I'm going to pull that bluish color again. Same thing, going to take the clean brush that's a little damp and smudge, oops, I'm going to put too much water on it. Pull that down. If there's too much water on the brush that's clean and damp that you're smudging with, it will work like an eraser. It'll lift whatever you just added paint to. Not really the look we're going for. Get a little bit of highlighting here. I'm going to smudge that out pretty good. And I want to take a little bit more black around his eye. Just going to do a couple more details because right now it's just a little too scruffy. Well, you can't tell in the video, but there's a lot of red, the reddish background showing here. I don't want quite that much. So it's going to look like I'm not doing a whole lot because that's not picking up on camera but I don't want it to be that scruffy looking. I want some red showing, just not that much. So I've got to decide where do I want the signature here or here. I think I like it in this corner here. And I'm going to just use that same blue color. Actually, I'm going to pull a little bit of gray in it so it's not too in your face. And make sure when you sign it, keep in mind when this gets framed, that it, the frame will go over just a bit at the bottom. So go up a little bit so that your, frame, your signature doesn't get totally cut off. There we go. So there is the signature. I'm going to stick my thumb in it just to tone it down a little bit. And I wanted to do a little bit of that blue color over the white in his face, just in here, just because it's so um, white. And it probably just looks like I'm not doing a whole lot of anything, but it looks better in person. Actually, I want to do that too. I'm going to take a little bit of that in these feathers. Oh, yeah, I like that. Oh, this guy is adorable. Oh, his foot. I forgot to finish his foot. Almost done. He just needs a little bit of shading. I don't want a ton of detail there. Same reason. I'm not trying to draw your attention there, but right now it's just kind of a glob. So we've got a shadow here. Got some little lines on his toes. He's got three toes up front that you can see. And then the definite lines over his foot. We want these slightly curved so that it, is, it looks rounded and not flat. A bit more of a shadow. And you can see that most of this is just going to kind of fade into that area. You just want a hint. We don't need a ton of detail in here. Okay, now he's done. You. I see all your unused art supplies over there. Oh my god, those brushes aren't even opened yet. Tragic. You keep buying new fancy materials, but you don't use them because you don't want to waste them. Stop making your art supplies sad. Sign up for art lessons for as little as $4 a month. There are over 300 painting and drawing lessons available when you sign up, and new ones every week. Patreon.com slash Lockery.